This is my dream, this is my passion, this is something that I believe in. If you're always afraid that things are gonna go wrong, your business is not gonna succeed. Who would have thought Sats would make us millionaires? I'm a third skill entrepreneur, a CEO of Spurgo. I'm the inventor of the locker boards. I'm 14 years old. I'm the CEO of Sally Candy. And I'm the co-founder here at Rumble Boxing. The CEO of Play Versus. This is my hustle. 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 <laughs> Today on My Hustle, we're going to see some extraordinary young entrepreneurs who have turned their passions into profit. Follow along as we learn about their business, determination, and road to success in the sneaker and footwear industry. We're kicking off today's episode in LA with Adil Shams, the co-founder of Cool Kicks. Is there anything you'd want to tell your mom and dad right now? Uh, mama, I made it. <laughs> hey, oh! A culture where high-priced kicks mean status, power. Used Nikes and Adidas can sell for hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars. The size of the athletic shoe market has more than doubled to $21 billion a year. I'm holding a yacht in my hand, a nice smart home, three kids' college tuition. When you have a $100,000 shoe in your hand, you don't let no one get close. Nobody. I'm Adele Shams, I'm 27 years old. I'm the co-founder of Cold Kicks. It's a buy, sell, and trade sneaker boutique. We did five million last year in sales. This is my hustle. My goal for projected sales is to be over 15 to 20 mil this year. People will always buy sneakers. That's just LA for you. We always planned on coming to LA because the culture and sneakers and clothing and everything is huge in LA. The population is much higher here. There's more money out here. Tons of sneaker shops out here. People say having more sneaker stores around is competitive. It's, it actually draws more attention. It's like the food industry. There's 10 restaurants on the same block, but all of them are making money. It's the same thing with sneakers, this culture. As long as you have the product that people want, people will always shop with you. Welcome. Try to organize it by like brands. This whole case is like Yeezys. We have the first generation Yeezys up top. These are the original sneakers he made. Luckily, we actually have the whole set. These end up going for like 3,000. These are brand new. These are hard shoes to basically find brand new. We have all three of them. Probably the most expensive shoe in here, it would be closer to the Red Octobers right here that we have. I've only seen like probably 10 pairs ever. Now we're in the stock room. We probably have over 3,000 pairs just at this location. The old band ones, such as a, a gem shoe. These are basically called back from Nike. They have an X on the back. It's never uh, released. This is easily over like $1,500 worth of shoe right there, just sitting right there. Because I love older releases. We just bought a collection last week. A bunch of older stuff. The old flu games, brand new. This is one of my favorite shoes, the Cherry 12s. Beautiful shoe, brand new. You never know what you can find back here. That's the best thing about it. It just literally shoes from the ground, literally all the way to the ceiling. Invest in products. You'd rather not have money in your bank account, rather invest in something that's gonna grow in value. It's like having stock, invest. Invest in inventory. This is what you sell for a living, invest in it. We just bought a big collection of 60 pairs of Revenge Storms. We spent over $10,000. So we're going through it right now, just trying to make sure everything's legit. Anytime a sneaker comes in, we have Ryan and Curtis, are our main two buyers that try to authenticate it. The cut's different. Look at that. Something will slip through the crack. Like a number on the size tag will make it fake. If we're not 100% sure, we'll pass on it because we want to keep our reputation clean. We don't want to be known as selling a fake pair of shoes. So that's key in a business. Nazi. H-Town's finest. I think we're really successful because we really do it for the people, for the culture, not for anything else, just for the actual love and passion of the sneaker world. <laughs> On our Instagram, we're really active with our followers and we try to show love. We try to get free giveaways. So if you grab them, you can have them. Grab it, you got it. Come to you. So 2018, I posted on Instagram, not only are we buying shoes now, we're buying clothing. In the 30 days, we probably maybe spent three to $500,000 just in clothing and accessories. We didn't have nowhere to store. My partners have a little penthouse and we use the top floor, literally, so a whole inventory for our other shop. You don't realize what you've been saving for a couple months till you see it. So after 30 days of seeing how much inventory we had, I was like, all right, this is it's time. We wanted to be close by to our current store and Melrose is just growing and growing. So two blocks away, well, there's a shoe palace there and a debate there. And I was like, if I open a store on that block, I know I can bully the block. Whenever shoe releases come, I can just be on that block. I won't let a shoe leave. I can just literally just buy everything and everyone has to come to me. So we ended up signing that lease. Stay tuned to find out more about a deal and how he continues to expand and grow his businesses. We saw how he started his business. And now we're back in LA with the deal shams, heading to check out The Cool. Welcome to The Cool. Buy, sell, trade of clothing, Supreme, Off-White, V-Loan, Vape, et cetera. Me and my co-founder, Mook. Over to the cool, let me show you some real drip. From rappers to athletes to your favorite Instagram model, they all come here because they want to shop for something to wear for the night or something to add to their drip. Chad, how's business? 
Hey, business is booming. The most popular item is like Bape Shark hoodies. Everyone likes these hoodies. We sell them about like 350 to four. We always say real life for Instagram. We put on a shirt, so it's popular. Blends, everyone likes our blend wave. The number one streetwear brand of literally all time, Supreme. Everyone's favorite Supreme thing is the box logo. The most expensive item we have in store is this pastel jacket. It's from Kanye West line. He was going to release this jacket, but never released. So it's like a few floating around. We have this about eight to nine thousand dollars right now. But if you want to be technical, most expensive item is that factory defect gold toe Jordan one. We're not hiring for the money, but it's dope. It adds our little unique thing to our store. But there's one thing in here that's like almost priceless. Someone sent this to me the other day. We posted it for $1,000, but I hit it because I know it's way worth more than that. So we're gonna keep this and put this in a glass case. Just know. Version two pillow, body pillow, coming soon. 6 a.m. I wake up and I had 70 missed calls. Surveillance video is showing the bandits first attempting to break into Cool Kicks LA using cutters. When that didn't work, they turned to a motorized saw before settling on a sledgehammer, shattering the storefront window, rushing in, coming out with arms full of clothes and other merchandise. It was probably the most devastating. I literally was heartbroken. Like that day was stressful. I had to close down the store for like a week. We lost so much money in sales. They stole, it was more than a quarter of a million dollars worth of inventory. It's not about the money, it's more of obtaining these items. These items are not easy to get. Looking back, it kind of made us stronger. It kind of made me more hungry. I was like, I just don't take stuff for granted. There are people are going to hate. People are going to hate success. It's just what it is. People are looking for a come up. What's next? I think we just got to bounce back. What keeps me more motivated is my family. I left them. I don't see them often, maybe three times a year. And just being cross country really motivates me because I don't want to come here and not be successful. I'd rather just go back home and just get a corporate job. I was actually scared to tell my parents about this. Being pressured by family, being a doctor. Both of my brothers are doctors. And it's just the pressure. Being from a Middle Eastern household is tough. Telling them you're moving cross country to sell shoes, uh, that's a slap in the face. Like, what do you mean? You just got your master's and you want to move three days later? And that was probably the hardest thing. That was the most pressure I've ever had. It was tough. And then when they both came out here and they saw both of my stores, they're like, damn. It says is unique because people don't understand the culture. Selling shoes, there's different levels to it, and as long as you can sell it with a storefront, with a brick and mortar, people don't get how much money is really into it. Now, after telling my mom everything, her seeing the success, the lines, the money coming, now I'm making more than a dentist, and now she's proud of me. While we work 60 plus hours a week, being at our two shoe stores on Melrose, we love to balance our life by playing some basketball and relieving some stress. Now we're about to challenge each other with a two-on-two -two quick matchup. In 20 years, I think I see myself still living in LA. I probably don't see myself still selling shoes or clothes. I think I'll probably go on a bigger flip, like houses or properties. And I also plan on owning a lot of restaurants. Still have the entrepreneurial mindset, so I'll probably see myself doing that in 20 years. Let's go! My main advice I would tell anybody is trying to be an entrepreneur, always reinvest what you have. Don't be greedy. If you see a million dollars in sales, doesn't mean take that million and spend it on personal items and stuff. Put it back into the business and grow your brand because if you don't put the money back in the thing that you built, nothing will ever grow. Up next, we're traveling from LA to Jersey City to visit the founder of Soul Fresh, Jeff Esquillo. As the sneaker and footwear industry continues to grow, where do people get their kicks cleaned? Entrepreneur Jeff Esquillo answered that question with Soul Fresh. His shoe blew apart. A total disaster. We took the same sneaker, the Nike PG 2.5, to sneaker expert Jeff Esquillo. So Soul Fresh is a sneaker cleaning and restoration business out of Jersey City. It's like pretty much dry cleaning for your shoes. My name is Jeff Esquillo, and I'm the 29-year-old co-founder of Soul Fresh in Cryo Central. And this is my hustle. So this is our first shop. Uh, we opened this one up actually in May 2018. So this is actually what we started after the pickup delivery. So if you notice, we offer uh, a lot of different clothing brands. And this is kind of our drop-off area. So see, these are some of the shoes that people drop off to us, live nearby, or even drive all the way from New York to even drop off for us. And we do get people who also mail them in. So we got orders in from like Saudi Arabia, um, people from the UK, Switzerland, they'll just mail them in. We have different services too. We don't do just cleaning. So if you look at our menu, we do unyellowing, which happens with natural oxidation on your soles of your shoes. We repaint them. So if the paint's chipping or you want to do a custom job, we can take care of that for you. Or re-glues, maybe the shoe's coming apart. That's just some of the things that we can do. And we get a whole bunch of premium pairs. A lot of different Yeezys, Balenciagas, Gucci's. It's a ton of different premium shoes, so we have to treat it like it's our own. 
A lot of the times people think they can clean it themselves. Uh, they'll end up cleaning using maybe the wrong kind of solution and doesn't really work out for them. So now people have found us uh, on the internet and been sending it over. So yeah, usually what I do is my first step is to kind of assess uh, exactly where the problem areas are. So looking at the bottom, seeing how dirty that is. From there, we gotta take the laces out. So we go ahead and we work from the bottom and then we're gonna start working our way up and into the inside as well. I'm gonna take our solution, dip it in some water, and then I start to scrub. So once you're finished with the bottom area, then you're gonna work your way up to the sides of the uppers and as well as the midsole. Um, and then again, the process is the same. We just use a different brush so that it's not as harsh. So depending on the material, you're gonna wanna go in with an even softer brush once you get to areas that are not so harsh, like the rubber and the leathers. So for the laces, we definitely take a look to see if there are any uh, significant stains there. So I, actually, I can see a couple here. So we'll just go in with our solution and then we'll dunk it in some water. Give it a nice hand scrub. Everything we do here is by hand. And then you just dry them off. Oh and now it's all done. Same as most people, I went to a four-year college. I uh, went to Rutgers University in New Brunswick. I ended up working for Wyndham Worldwide, a hotel hospitality company. I spent a couple years there, and then I ended up getting my grad school degree. Uh, while I was in grad school, I started learning about uh, entrepreneurship and a little bit about business, and that kind of opened my eyes like, wow, this is kind of cool. So while I was there, uh, my best friend Danny and I at the time, we were kind of talking about cryotherapy, and we knew it was kind of a big opportunity here on the East Coast. I don't look like it now, but I used to do powerlifting. And I noticed on the West Coast and in Texas, it was a fairly big thing to do. Uh, so we brought it over here in 2016, and we were one of five locations to open up. And now we're uh, three of like 20, 30 plus. So things have been going well there, and I knew that I kind of found my calling. I ended up leaving corporate America once I saw the ball rolling with uh, my first company, Cryo. And then along came Soul Fresh, and now we're opening our big store coming soon. All right guys, this is gonna be the future home of the next Soul Fresh. Uh, so you can see here, it's a lot bigger. The old location had about like 500 square feet, so this is actually four times that. So there's definitely gonna be a bigger workspace because we need to handle all the volume that's been coming in. So this will be all the employee workspace. Um, as you get more to this side, this is gonna be the retail area. Um, so we're gonna have some clothes, shoes, uh, we're gonna have some consignment. So we'll carry a lot of Supreme, Yeezys, Nike brands. We envision maybe a cleaning station here. We have a, lot, a couple local schools nearby. So if anybody wants to come during lunch, get a quick clean, we'll hit it up and they'll get to go back to class. So we got a lot of room to play with. So we're super excited about what we can make out of the space. In the service business, uh, there's not much uh, you're paying besides the rent and the payroll. So we average about $4,500 a month in cost, taking into account marketing, rent, payroll, and all the different things that you need to start a business. So when we first opened up, we, had, we were doing pickup delivery. So we were only making a couple hundred dollars a week, uh, a couple hundred dollars a month or so. Once we saw a lot of traction, we were getting orders repeatedly, that's when we opened up the store. So when we opened up the store in May 2018, we were making about like two grand a month, which is lower than even some of our costs. Um, after a couple months, we brought up, we got up to closer to the four, uh, 4, 5,000 range, and that was enough to break even. Every month is a, is a new all-time high, and we're hoping that uh, eventually with this new store, more working space, we're hoping to get $10,000 a month or even more. So once we get situated in the new store, we have a lot of big plans for So Fresh. Definitely want to get into apparel. I want to get into solutions, be great for the people who don't want to have the service done here. They could do it at home by purchasing our solution and doing that. This is probably going to be the, one of the big flagship locations in Jersey City. We do have dreams of opening them up uh, throughout the U.S. Because right now, a lot of people ship their shoes to us, but it would be great if we had them in the middle of the country for those people who are in different areas, an easier place to ship for them so they could save them money on shipping and we can grow our business nationwide. Up next, we'll head to New York City to learn from Nick Eunice about 3D printed shoes made out of recycled materials. Not only does Nick Eunice make sneakers using a 3D printer, but he's also making them from recycled materials. We're here launching the Yin and Yang collection, which is our first signature sneaker of Eunice Brands at New York Sustainable Fashion Week. What's really cool about our footwear is actually how we make our footwear. We start with 
junk plastic bottles, either from a recycling plant or landfills. We're able to then craft the uppers of the shoes, as well as 3D print the soles. And there you have your finished shoe. My name is Nicholas Eunice, and I'm the CEO and founder of Eunice Brands. We create fully sustainable 3D printed footwear from start to finish, and this is my hustle. We're here at the Eunice Brands facility in Aliquippa, Pennsylvania. When I was in high school, I started customizing shoes, and from the customizations, it led to one big customization with a wrapper, and that wrapper was Riff Raff. This was originally a Jordan 5 Fire Red, so this upper was all white. So I ripped that apart, added the black satin leather, added the number, which wasn't originally there, as well as his logo overlaid on the back. And we were supposed to put this on eBay, and within 24 hours it actually hit a little over a million dollars, and Nike hit us with a cease and desist order. Nike gave us a cease and desist and said, hey, that's our shoe. So when that happened, Nicholas decided, you know what, I don't like that feeling of maybe getting sued. He said, I'm going to make my own brand. And that's what started the ball rolling with his own brand. And the, and the way he made his own brand was 3D printed. This is our first uh, version of our 3D printer. And at the time, I went to a couple of the large companies and asked essentially if they would help us. So would they have a 3D printer that could do what we wanted? Could they print a flexible filament at a high consistency and quality? And the general consensus was no. So I decided to go ahead and be able to make my own printer. I learned how to build a 3D printer from the internet, just going on different articles as well as YouTube and forums. My wife had just broken a cookie cutter. I said, hey Nicholas, can you come out and help me unload this truck? He said, just give me one minute. And he 3D printed a cookie cutter that she broke. And by the time we went out and came back in, it was done and she could finish making her cookies, which I thought was like, well, are you kidding me? This is unbelievable. It doesn't really end with the shoes. Uh, I constantly printing Christmas and birthday presents. So I actually printed my mother a incense holder. So I'm actually going to design her a new version of this uh, where I'll split the model into 10 or 15 different pieces. The traditional FDM printer lets you print in one solid color where as the new kind of techniques that you're able to do can feed in the four different colors and you can maybe make this a blue, color or actually make his head skin color. And we have our 22 3D printers set up. We started working with uh, Mosaic with their palette too. And essentially you can feed in four different colors and it'll splice it and cut it. So whatever you're designing, you could actually design and have the appropriate colors as you're printing it. Once your shoe is printed, we take the midsole and then we're able to adhere it to the outsole. And then we will go through and add a finishing edge to this as well as then pressing and adding the logo and then your shoe's ready to be shipped out to you. Right now, we're contracting companies out to then recycle the plastic, make it into a thread. We're then able to use that thread to either 3D print or 3D knit the entire shoe. We are working on two different projects with Penn State to do that all in-house. So we're trying to keep everything we do on the path of sustainability. And one of the big things that I was learning in school is a closed supply chain loop which practically doesn't exist and that's something that we're really trying to create and one of the really cool things about our packaging is they're actually packaged in a recycled cardboard tube essentially once you're done wearing your shoes you could send them back to us we're able to completely break them down and rip them apart make them into a new pair of shoes and you're able to get a discount off of future purchases we were contacted for Fashion Week approximately two months beforehand. I think it was a great opportunity to get a lot of customer feedback as far as them being able to actually try the shoes on, take a couple steps, see how they really like the shoes. So I wasn't expecting it to be as flexible or as comfortable, and so I was surprised by that. And then they're also super lightweight, which I was not expecting at all, which is awesome. People were actually very pleased with how it was wearing, pleased with the comfort level as well as the whole idea of how we're sustainable going from a plastic junk ocean bottle to a finished shoe that you can wear. I just love the idea that it's made of tie or recycled bottles and plastic and great stuff. So our next step would be finding a celebrity to partner with and being able to really push out not only our brand but their brand as well as being able to be a rival to 
Nike Adidas Under Armour. And I think we can because of our technology, as well as our uh, kind of, at least my background, as well as the people that I'm adding to the team's background, that I think we will be able to bring a strong energy to the table that Nike, Adidas, and Under Armour really just aren't or are lacking on right now. Okay, so these are some of the pairs of shoes that I have been collecting. I'd like to start with this first pair here. Uh, these are Ferris Bueller Dunks and they are uh, modeled after the Ferris Bueller outfit that he wore when he was actually in the city during the parade scene. This next pair I've had actually probably three or four different times and this time I'm actually keeping them. <laughs> um, and these are the What the LeBron 11s. This is a Darrell Rivas' signature shoe, and Darrell Rivas is actually from Aliquippa, Pennsylvania, which is where we are currently. And this is number 181 of 224, so this was an extremely limited release. And it has Aliquippa, as well as the Rivas Island logo, actually um, stitched into the sole, which is really cool. From cleaning and repairing sneakers to making them from recycled materials, we saw three creative and business savvy individuals today. With a crazy idea, dedication and drive, these entrepreneurs have shown what it takes to have my hustle.